Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I see a few more people coming in. Um, just give us a couple more minutes. I know it's just uh, nine o'clock on the hour. I'll probably start just uh, two minutes past. Um, if you want to let me know where you're from, I see there's a few teleporters here. Um, thanks for joining. We get started shortly. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. All right. Just a couple more minutes and um, we'll get started uh, very shortly. Yep. David, today's session will be recorded and will be available um, on this platform as well to get. And also happy to share the slides. Um, also, if you go in the right hand tab, you'll see there's some documentation. There's some um, info to a blog post, which we cover a lot in this uh, talk today and are there some docs about how to set up Teleport? Okay, so um, I'm gonna get started. Mike, do you want to come join me from the backstage? Make sure everything's working. where Mike is. Hopefully he's be joining us shortly. He will also be joining us on webinar today. But today we're going to be talking about how to um, quickly onboard engineers and protect infrastructure using Teleport as a SAML and an IDP. There's lots of acronyms happening in here, and this is going to be a um, sort of intermediate to Teleport webinar, but we're going to cover a few of the basics to get started for people who aren't familiar with Teleport. Ashley asked... Uh, ChatGPT, but what would be a better title? And, um, you know, Teleport Turbocharge, Streamline Onboarding, Secure Apps, and Unleash Summer SSO. Yeah, this is the power of access control. So let's get started. So myself, uh, I run the developer relations team here at Teleport. And you may have seen some of my other webinars. I uh, have Mike with myself here, who's the engineer who built a lot of the uh, features and functionality that we're going to be demoing today. So. If there's anyone technical in the audience, please ask as many questions as you can uh, to Mike. Mike, do you want to give a quick introduction? All right, let me see. Mike might be having some technical difficulties getting into uh, the stage. Let me just um, check with someone else, see if you can come join us for a quick intro. Okay, I'll give one, Mike one more minute. Hopefully things can work out. Um, you know, there's always some technical difficulties, but um, I'll keep on going. Hopefully Mike will come and I can come back here. So to set the scene, you know, I think everyone has either growing or shrinking teams. These are some things that we're seeing, you know, some of the problems that solve. So as teams grow, the need to quickly onboard and offboard engineers, um, is very important and it's important for a range of things. And there's a few things we're seeing. So we're seeing growing teams. We're also seeing a range of growing infrastructure. Each year this multiplies whether you're running your virtual machines in AWS or you have bare metal, just compute in general, you have a range of infrastructure growing and yet you have a abundance of applications also growing. I think the average SaaS startup was running something like 150 software applications. And there's also internal applications that you run and maintain. Oh, here we have Mike. Sorry about that. No worries, Mike. All right, I'll um, finish my problems that we're solving. Um, we also have a range of growing secrets as you try to access all of these applications. And all of this complexity results in extra risk that you see in your infrastructure. And these are stats from our infrastructure access reports. 
the mixture of large growing teams, lots of applications, complexity of infrastructure kind of causes all these problems due to um, scale and risk. So we are seeing lots of breaches due to shared secrets, many organizations using just the shared secret as their main uh, access method. And then the third point is we looked at that room of people, 76% of people aren't even sure that the ex-employees still have access to their infrastructure. And uh, this can create a range of problems, um, which you know should be pretty obvious, but especially if you're in a highly compliant industry, you know, it's a big no-no to give people access to um, all of their secrets. And this will lead to a range of attacks. But before I go into attacks, um, I know if Mike, if you just want to give a quick intro before we go further. Yeah, hi, I'm Michael Wilson. I'm a software engineer here at Teleport. I've been here for, I don't know, nine months or so. So hi, everybody. Hi, and then uh, Mike's going to go over the second half of the slide. So I'm going to keep coming to what we see as a result of all these secrets. And this is what a standard attack looks like. You know, we have a secret leading to a breach. We have uh, individuals, humans making a mistake. A, a hacker will exploit their humans' errors, just little secrets. And also these mistakes, they may be relatively trivial um, on the schemes that are relatively advanced. You know, LastPass was an uh, attack on a Plex server on someone's own machine. And so we're seeing increasingly sophisticated attacks, which may even be a small mistake um, on the person doing something. And then when they get access to a secret, they establish a foothold into your infrastructure. And then when you get a foothold, you can easily pivot to adjacent systems. And there's a range of sort of industry responses to all of these. So people do phishing training, people do vaults, people do endpoint security. But a range of these responses don't necessarily solve the raw solution. And this is one of the problems that Teleport solves as in the world of uh, zero trust. And the concept of zero trust is we no longer have the perimeter-based security and you trust the individuals and the endpoints explicitly and have checks in place. So I'm going to just do a quick poll here to um, check where everyone is. So I'm going to open a poll for if you're currently a Teleport user. If you go to the polls tab next to the chat, you should see a little red button and you uh if you could just fill this in let me know where um if you're currently a customer whether you're on like a pov or looking to learn more and this will help us to share a bit more um information okay so i think these kind of votes are coming in Let's see we have a mixture of people using our self-hosted enterprise products, some cloud, some community edition, and people looking to um, learn more. So kind of a good blend of people. And um, for people not familiar with Teleport who are new, well, our community edition is our open source edition. Um, oh, it's slowly ramping up. This is available on our downloads page, but also GitHub and um, one thing that we also believe is lots of our security features are also available in our community edition as well. Okay, gonna stop sharing the poll and come back to the presentation here. So for people who are new to Teleport or even people who are existing Teleport, this is likely what your life looks like before Teleport. You have a sea of um, infrastructure and assets available that you're using on the day-to-day -day that you've kind of connected. You've slowly cobbled together a solution of maybe some bastions on GCP, maybe a VPN for a database with a password and P uh, maybe a dedicated PKI for Kubernetes. And you have this huge web of systems which slowly evolves over time. And as this system grows and your team grows, it becomes really difficult to manage. And this is what our standard, you know, customer before Teleport. And this is what life looks like after Teleport. And so Teleport is a unified access platform and gateway to your infrastructure. Everyone, both your engineers and services, connect through Teleport to access the resources. We have access policies and 
audit on Teleport itself. So this is, is the checks that you can perform to make sure that both engineers and services only have access to the certain roles and resources on demand. And, you know, we started off um, providing access to SSH and Kubernetes. And over the last couple of years, we've continued to add more databases, web applications and Windows desktops. And um, one thing that's sort of unique about Teleport compared to other solutions is that we always go very deep on the protocol. And so, for example, for Postgres or for MySQL, we speak natively that protocol. And so we get a little more information in our audit log. And I'll give you a little demo of what the um, UI looks like as well. And one thing that's sort of missing from that diagram, and I've kind of alluded to before, is we also remove secrets in all of this infrastructure. So there's no passwords in Teleport or private keys. Everything is um, certificate-based. We use stateless agents. We have biometric authentication. And for people looking for more secure options, we also have TPMs on the client with our passwordless edition. And also you can back Teleport or server using HSMs. So I'm going to just share this quick diagram of how Teleport works to sort of tie things together. Going back to our initial diagram of all of the people, you have engineers and machines connecting to their various tools that they are they like to use normally. So kubectl, TSH is our command line tool. You come in, you log in for the day. When you log in, you go through the Teleport proxy. This goes out to your identity provider. The identity provider, uh, this can be either GitHub or it could be an Okta or Active Directory. This checks you know, whether you're still employed, which groups you have, what's the traits of your user. This will be important later on for when Mike goes into the demo. Then based upon that check, you say, hey, Ben is in DevOps. You get access to the production systems. Mike is in engineering. He does get access to the staging systems and some databases from an query. And so everything goes through the central proxy. Everything is audited. And then you get access to your infrastructure. And so you can put all of your infrastructure in private subnets, run the Teleport agent as a reverse tunnel. So nothing has to be on the public internet. And just up here on the top, you see we have just-in-time access requests. This is a pretty core feature for organizations looking to lead the principle of least privilege. And so Teleport lets you not only say, hey, you know, Mike is still working at Teleport. He has access to staging, but occasionally Mike needs to access production systems for debugging. And the way in which we solve this is we have just-in-time access requests. So Mike can say, hey, I need to access the production server and the production database to run this query. These access requests go through Teleport, and you can send this out to third-party providers. So if it's just a day-to-day -day thing, you can go into Slack. You know, If it's a break glass scenario, you might want to page duty to wake someone up in the middle of the night to give him access to who he can fix the solutions. In today's webinar, like, I'm not going to go too deep into sort of the introductions. We have lots of great webinars on the introduction to Teleport. This webinar from Jay and Dan is great. It's really popular on our YouTube. I'd, if you're new and you're just looking to learn more, I know there's um, eight of you, I'd really recommend um, starting with this webinar. But I hope at a high, high level, we're going to be talking a lot more now about our SSO and um, SAML integration and Teleport as an IDP. So um, logging with Teleport, Teleport as a SAML provider. This is sort of the key topic for today's talk. And this is a new feature that was added in uh, Teleport 12.2, or one of our recent patch 12.1, Mike points out. And this is a pretty interesting addition to Teleport. And what it lets you do is it sort of extend how you access applications. So I'm going to show this. Actually, why don't I show Teleport itself? I have this backup video. It's always good to uh, just do a live demo. So this is the Teleport web proxy. Um, you see here I have GitHub as my identity provider. We also support passwordless, but I'm going to uh, log in. Since I'm already authenticated with GitHub, you see the you know flow kind of works smoothly. I'm into Teleport. Here you can see I have a range of my servers and my databases, my applications, and Kubernetes clusters. 
I'm going to focus just on protecting internal applications. So this is an example of, um, say you have an internal wiki or Metabase or Jenkins. These are all tools which, if you see in this URL, we have Jenkins dot the URL of Teleport. These are only accessible and protected by Teleport itself. So if I was to go to this URL, let's go and authenticate me in. So let me open up the wiki. It has this slight thing. So it's sort of authenticating with Teleport service and it's going to connect me directly to the wiki. Touch. It's, it's thinking this morning. We'll give it one moment. The demo gods are still waking up this morning. Let me pick a um, this webinar app. So you can see this is our webinar app. The URL has changed to webinar. I don't think you can see it because it's cut off in uh, our webinar platform, but you get access to this application. And you can use this to protect a range of applications, both internal um, and also we're going to be talking about protecting external ones. You may see here, we also have AWS. This is another um, feature that we support, and this lets you share uh, AWS IAM roles with AWS. So for example, here I have a AWS M role just scoped to CloudWatch. And if I click this, it's going to take me in. It will route me to AWS, and this takes me directly to CloudWatch. I have a role that I can view a CloudWatch dashboard. But if I was to come in here to go to EC2, I think I have access to EC2, let's see. Yes, I wouldn't have the permissions. And so this is another great addition if you want to share access to um, resources. So you see, I didn't have the access policy. And it makes it very easy if you want to give access to specific roles and users, also mapping to your Okta identity, as we sort of mentioned before. Okay, so this is protecting internal applications. And just for example, I'll log into Grafana here. And you can see here at the bottom, I've logged in as Ben Arendt. And this flow uses our SAML SSO connector. So you, I've logged in with GitHub as my SSO, then I've gone into Teleport, then I've given my um, SAML information assertions to Grafana, which is protected by Teleport. So we come back to the slides. Let me share this slide. Okay, so I'm doing the same flow again. You can see we have the app. This is a Jenkins example. You can see I'm logged in as myself and I have my Jenkins user. So this is just a short demo. Oh, and I think actually this is another important part of Teleport is that we have an audit log of all of the activity. So you see I successfully authenticated with a sample service provider and you get a full information log that you can send off to a SIM solution uh, using our FluentD plugin. So why did we build a sample provider? One, it extends logins beyond Teleport protecting apps and also supports SaaS providers. What does this mean? This means previously you had to protect an app by Teleport, but now you can just access other apps. So this is uh, Jira on Atlassian.com. I'm going to log in here. I'm going to just uh, log in as Bob at Earth. If I log in here, it will actually log out. Let me come to Jira again. Log in. Um, log in. I'm having a 404 error, but the demo gods, Mike, haven't been kind to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> good that we have the video. It's good that we have the video. So if I come back to the video here, um, I log in at sort of Atlassian.net, it will take me to teleport, and then it redirects me back in, sends the sample assertions. And so I'll show you that demo next. Another benefit of our sample provider is often um, 
the IDPs and sample providers are owned by IT, but if you're an engineering team, you have to go through a long process to sort of protect your apps. So you, you know, it's very easy to get SAML uh, plugins for all of your applications, but most people don't go to the effort of it because it's very easy to add it to your application, but you have to go all the way through um, your IT source to get everything sort of set up and configured. Another benefit is the greater unified audit, and then also access requests. So you have the ability to require access to different applications. If I come into access request here, you can see you can limit the access. So you may just want to give access to um, like Grafana based upon access requests. This is sort of the flow that you'd go through. You'd say, hey, I need to run something on these different systems. And then you can change your sample provider is a reason of access request as well. And then also, you know, Teleport can run um, self-hosted or on-premise. And so it lets you provide support for custom maps and also hey, gapped environments as well. So this is luckily the Jira example. I'm going to log in as Bob. I luckily had a shared session. So I log in. I've come back to Teleport. Here I'm going to log in with my username and password. The same thing would work if I look at my identity provider. So, and then I'll be redirected back to Atlassian. And then I've, here I was just configuring this. It's sort of an example that you see in the URL, we have atlassian.net. And then here I've logged in as Bob at asteroid.earth. And then you can see my permissions. So let me keep going, I think. So this is the flow. So we've had long in with teleport. We go to the sign in and then you go back to your application, which is a pretty standard SAML SSO flow for people who aren't familiar. And I think Mike, uh, you're going to take it from here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So uh, if you're familiar with SAML, you know, there's, there's a bit of a dance uh, between the service that you're trying to log into and the identity provider. Um, and in this case, Teleport is functioning as the identity provider. So you'll go uh, and attempt to log into your service. Uh, you know, a request is made back to Teleport, which then performs uh, the SAML authentication dance. Um, can we go to the next slide? Yep. So um, when you log in using SAML, there's a number of attributes uh, that come along in the assertions made uh, by SAML. Um, to date, we support uh, just the user ID and the list of groups, and these are the attributes um, that are uh, that are that come as part of the assertion. Depending on the application, you may be able to configure it to use these uh, attributes to control access. Um, it is very dependent on the application that you're targeting. Um, but if, if there's need, this is definitely something that can be expanded in the future, but this was just kind of our first, uh, first start at it. Uh, shall we continue? Mm -hmm. Um, so at the moment, this is a, a teleport enterprise, uh, and team feature, uh, and, and cloud. Uh, so this, this is not available in the community edition at the moment. Uh, there is no extra configuration, however. Uh, it just is is turned on and it can be disabled if you don't want it turned on for some reason. Um, but it is it does come enabled by default. Um, we've tested this with a number of different dev tools. You saw Grafana, we've tested it with Jira. Um, but how um, it's very application dependent how the SAML configuration works. So there are some external tools. We had good luck using this um, www.samltool.com uh, to help we uh, to help get the information from our the application that we were targeting into Teleport. Um, there is documentation online that kind of describes this all in, in greater detail. Um, yeah. Go on. Yeah, and then okay, so. Uh, in Teleport 13, we're going to be launching uh, Okta integration. Um, 
So to clarify that, do you mind going to the next slide? Yep. So one of the uh, things that we've noticed with Okta is that, you know, management of Okta right now, it's hard to do uh, in, a, in a principle of least, using the principle of least privilege. Um, you know, in order, the example given here is like some developer needs access to five different production applications in Okta. Uh, Okta as is, this is something you'd have to go in and assign a user directly to some groups, uh, let them do what they need to do, and then come back and uh, alter their access afterwards. So what we're trying to do is close the gap here by, um, for one, allowing Okta applications to be synchronized with Teleport. So they'll display in the list of applications that Teleport um, Teleport already shows. And additionally, um, tie in our access request functionality with Okta so that you can do things like um, have an access request granted to these five production apps uh, you know, in teleport, which is then going to be mirrored in Okta, and then it will be revoked when the access request uh, expires. Um, so this is a way of getting kind of like this short-lived access uh, that teleport provides in Okta itself. Uh, could we head to the next slide? Yep. Yeah, so as I said before, um, the applications list uh, and teleport will be po will be populated with Okta applications. Um, the access requests uh, that are in teleport will support uh, hitting uh, Okta directly and granting access within Okta. Um, you'll have uh, and just as with everything else uh, in teleport, you know you can you get your policy as code, you get unified audit. Um, but now you know we kind of envision. Uh, teleport to just kind of be the source of truth for your infrastructure, even outside of teleport proper, um, extending into Okta. Uh, can we head to the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, so, just to start with, you know, this is an example of some of the um, some of the teleport resources that are that are kind of associated with this Okta integration. We have this notion of an Okta import rule, which will apply um, the labels that Teleport already has to the applications and groups imported by this Okta integration, um, which you can then use as part of Teleport's RBAC policies to grant access. Um, we have this new notion of a group here, you'll see, um, and these are groups pulled in from Okta. Um, and they'll be kept locally within teleport and then you'll be able to request access to those groups as needed. Um, and then with uh, the role mapping here, you see we have these app labels and group labels. So if you're, if you're a user, yeah, sorry. If you're a user that has access to some of the labels injected by the Okta import rules, uh, upon login, um, uh, this Okta integration will detect that you have access to this and grant these this access automatically. So if you're if you're uh, provided in this example here, we have this Okta grant access admin. If you're a user that has that is um, part of this role, uh, you'll be granted in Okta any app label any apps with this these labels, you know, value one or value two, um, and any groups that have these labels. So we have some label name along with. Uh, Octoprod admin. I could probably share that uh, briefly to uh, if I remove my request. So these are the uh, similar labels that you're talking about for RBAC engine. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so for people who are sort of new to teleport, everything, you know, you have your identity provider, which maps to different roles that you create and these roles resources you can define and add in let's say the on role or what other information that you want to provide access to so i think that's a kind of a good overview of the primitives you wanted to touch on anything else in here mike oh i think that's that's good for now i, mean, I know we have a ton of questions 
uh, in the Q&A uh, section. We do have a lot of questions. So before we get to the questions, I'm going to do another poll um, to say like what information you would like to know about uh, Teleport as an IDP, uh, whether you're sort of interested in this feature that we've sort of gone over. Um, it should be available um, in the polls tab. So if people can see that. All right, we, we, we need to work on our marketing. We have one person, of, still don't understand what the feature is. So hopefully we'll get to that in our Q&A. We um, shared the survey. Maybe some people will need a bit more info. And one person is excited to, to do it tomorrow. Okay. Oh, we've got three people. So that's good. We've got some good activity on um, Teleport as an IDP in SAML. It's definitely, you know, like a unique sort of interesting feature, you know, beyond the Teleport core, but we hope it will um, really sort of empower engineering and development teams. So I'm going to stop sharing and go back to it. You should be able to just keep um, filling that in. The poll is still open. I'm going to skip this one and just go to our questions before we get to the next steps. I know we have a lot in the Q&A. So um, I'm going to go from the top downwards. Um, let me share this one from Tad. So you can use access requests to assume membership of Okta groups, correct? What configuration is required on the Okta side to allow this? This is going on for you, Mike. Yeah, you'll, you'll need an Okta API token, uh, which can be created fairly easily. Um, that has the access to grant and remove um, uh, group membership and application app membership. Okay. And then um, another one is documentation for uh, AD, I guess is like Active Directory integration being updated. And if there's a kind of follow-up question on if there's anything specific you're looking for, if you want to leave in the chat, maybe. We'll keep going. Um, this one from David with a uh, teleport agent running a reverse tunnel essentially means you don't have to open up any security groups or firewall rules. Yes, that is correct for the um, agency you're running. You just connect to the proxy. So it's everything is going the outbound. You may want to do like an outbound firewall, but inbound, you can just keep it completely closed. Um, after logging in, can the user be immediately redirected to the protected web app? Yes. This In this example, you might have seen I had the URL. So you have Jenkins.teleportcluster name. That will take you to a sort of login page, which looks like Teleport. If you go through that subdomain, that will automatically direct you back to the application that you have. Um, all right, Mario, if we already have uh, Okta audit logs, what is the benefit of Teleport as an IDP here? Do you work in tandem with Okta or are you substituting it? Mike, do you want to give this one a bit more? Yeah, this is this is really working in tandem with Okta. So if you're using Teleport internally for certain things and not for others, this is kind of giving you the opportunity to expand what Teleport can manage and then kind of have like a central auditing location. Um, you know, it, it's... It's basically, um, it, it's. I think. I think. Yeah, saying that it, it's working in tandem is is probably the most succinct way to put it. It's meant to kind of complement. Yeah, and I think similar to the point, depending upon the size of your organization, you may it may be difficult to get IT to give you access to Octa groups and Octa resources to set up uh, like an IDP or SAML for your internal apps. So since most teams already are quite comfortable with rolling out teleports it makes it very easy for them to protect internal web apps that they might maintain that might have like no authentication or may just have jwts this is like another option that is um another option for providing access and last one um yes the presentation will be available i'll share as a pdf and then also we can the recording will be available as well 
Oh, and uh, yeah, the follow-up question says, uh, for Azure AD, the documentation needs to be improved. So uh, I'll definitely get the team's feedback on that. Yeah, from that. So we'll look at fixing that as well. So let's see. When will custom SAML and IDP come with the community edition? It's a good question, Jordan. We, um, I will talk to my product person. Um, you know, I think in an ideal world, we would like to provide a little taste of this in our community edition. We'll have some interesting news catch coming out next week. We'll make it definitely more accessible uh, enterprise. I would just basically say, watch this space, come back uh, on Friday and subscribe to our blog. We'll have more information that will make this more accessible to people as well. All right, any other questions? Okay, I'll give people a um, couple more minutes. Okay, so support was good at helping. So recommended next step. So if you want to uh, try this, you can try Teleport free for 14 days. Um, I believe Teleport Cloud is now running 12.1. Is that right, Mike? I think so, but I am not the authority on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm 99% sure that you can try Teleport as a SAML provider. And the other information with Teleport as a... Octo integration, this is going to be coming in Teleport 13. Teleport 13 will be coming out um, the second week in May. We're currently testing and debugging this. So our documentation and more information will be available. But we wanted to give you sort of a sneak peek about what was coming and um, getting people more interested. If you're interested in, you know, trying a beta release or alpha as part of the trial, um, you know, we can probably get you set up to try out this software if you're sort of new and uh, very eager to get trying. Then last up, we have our Getting Started Guide. You know, this is, is a good resource if you want to run our community edition. And lastly, if you want to stay up to date, join our community Slack. And then also, you know, Teleport is an open source, open core business. We always appreciate a star on our GitHub repo. And you can follow Mike's updates uh, too. So <laughs> you can follow his issue and anything else that comes up. Um, create issues in uh, GitHub and the discussion. Oh, thanks, Kat, for putting that up there. So let me just come back in. Uh, doesn't look like we have any more questions. So I would like to um, thank everyone for joining today. Um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. So really appreciate your time and um, looking forward to um, Tell him more. Oh, Mike's got a compliment on your beard too. So. Thank you, Jordan. I really appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, David. All right. I'm going to work on my beard game and to improve it. But thanks everyone for joining. Uh, have a great week.